Hey, this is Zach from ZachMakesGames.com with a simple but effective update and optimization to my previous quad tree demo. If you haven't watched my previous videos on quad trees, go check them out to get a better idea of what's going on in this demo. I talked about this specific simulation and the application and how I wrote it and how it works and why it works in my 2D quad tree demo video. So go check out that video to get a better idea of what you're looking at here if you don't already have an idea of what's going on. I showed off this demo a while ago and I was pretty happy with the results, but as I started to really experiment with it, I noticed that the performance of the demo was much worse around the middle of the simulation. I've been wanting to tackle this issue for a while now, so I'm happy to finally have a solution. If we run the basic quad tree simulation that I showed previously, we can see that the time it takes to perform one step of the simulation will eventually become large for one or two frames in the middle of the simulation. So here I have a forest populated on screen and it's spatially partitioned into a quad tree which you can see based on the black boxes. I'm going to pick a random tree to ignite. It's right here. And then we're going to go ahead and ignite the forest. You can see down here right now it says build 4 milliseconds. That is the time it took to actually build the quad tree, create the random trees, and fill the, the space. And if I click ignite, we can see this changes to 0 milliseconds and 56 US, which I think might need to be nanoseconds, not microseconds, but that's a, a, a bug, I guess. So if we keep igniting the neighbors, we can see that the time it takes is crawling upwards. It's getting bigger and bigger. One millisecond now, 15 milliseconds. And this is the part in the simulation where it typically hits some sort of maximum. 15 milliseconds is a long time. The next step drops back down to two milliseconds. And if we keep going, we're probably gonna see another big spike, probably not as big as the first spike, but let's find out. Two still, three, two, three, ten. There's our second spike. And this is pretty typical of this simulation. There's a first big spike, kind of levels out again, and there's another big spike, and then it kind of drops off. So back to two, two, one, and there we go. At this point, it looks like the entire forest has been set ablaze. So while this time doesn't seem like much, if this scenario were being rendered in real time, we would most likely see a pretty severe hitch in the graphics for at least one frame. Though 15 milliseconds doesn't seem like much, add it to an already 16 millisecond long render thread and our FPS will drop significantly for this frame. We are doubling the time it takes to render just based on some CPU processing, which is not good. So I started thinking about how I could improve on this simulation to avoid these large hiccups in processing time. It occurred to me that quad trees are typically best for static geometry, and I realized that I could use this to my advantage. Typically forests are static, at least the trees are. They don't get up and walk around. They don't drift from place to place like some sort of animate object might, like a player or an NPC or a barrel that the player is rolling down the hill. Typically trees are pretty static. And I realized that for each frame, I don't need to query the quad tree if each tree that is static already knows where its also static neighbors are. If the trees kept track of their neighbors, they could directly update them instead of having to first find them in the quad tree. We already take quite a while to build the quad tree, so it wouldn't take much more time to pre-compute each tree's neighbor. So if instead of random data, we're working with designer placed objects, we could probably even do this offline before the game is even built. If somebody is hand placing each tree in a forest, each object in the world, we could eliminate this processing time altogether most likely, which would be a really awesome optimization to the optimization. But it turns out that this method of having each object keep track of its neighbors was a really simple update to make, and it drastically improves the per frame performance of this simulation. So if we run the simulation with this new optimization, we can see that the build time takes quite a bit longer, but this extra time would likely be hidden by other lengthy loads if this is being computed during some sort of loading time. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this optimization on, and I'm going to check this neighbor tree box. And what we're going to do is we're going to build the tree again. 
Now we see that the quad tree disappeared and we see a grid. The quad tree is still there. We still built the quad tree. These trees still exist in the quad tree. It's just not being drawn right now. But the cool thing is now each tree already knows where its neighbors are. And the trick here is that if we look at the build time, we're looking at 49 milliseconds build time now, which is like 10 times greater than it was to just build the basic quad tree. And that's because we have to process each tree and find all of its neighbors ahead of time. But even 50 milliseconds isn't very long, and especially if you're already looking at a loading screen. But let's look at how long it takes to actually step through this simulation. Does it matter? We'll pick our random tree. Here it is. And we'll ignite its neighbors. Eight microseconds, which I think should be nanoseconds. I'll fix that in a subsequent update. Far less than we had before for the first step, though. That's not very long at all. Let's try again. Let's see. 32, 53, 109. We're still under one millisecond. 137. What's our highest? 350. Skipped past it, but 350 was our highest. Let's keep going. 308, 348, 302. There we go, we're done. Far, far faster. This is significantly faster because we're doing all of the discarding ahead of time. We're pre-computing our neighbors so we know that each tree is only ever going to check things that it knows it needs to check rather than checking a quad and a quad tree and discarding things that we don't need. So this is a big, big improvement. This is a drastic improvement to the simulation time, and it has minimal impact on time and space constraints also, which is awesome. The only real downside to this method is that the search radius for this simulation gets baked in ahead of time so that the, the objects know how far to search for their neighbors. But this could be a problem, or it could not be a problem. If it's static data, most likely your search radius is also going to be static. But the cool thing too is that it really doesn't take very long to recompute this, especially if the data is the same. We're not rebuilding the quad tree. We're not rebuilding random points. We just need to rebuild the neighbors. You could pretty easily hide the latency of recalculating this in some other workload. It would be pretty easy to kind of do it over time, do it on another thread and just have it kind of happen at the next update, or most likely, we're kind of instantaneously doing these updates, but if a fire was going to spread, it would spread slowly over time. There's likely going to be time between updates that you could even hide this latency in, which would be really cool to kind of make this a more versatile system. But let's look at how this performs against the previous methods. So here's our old friend time attack. And these values are set to be the same kind of default values as the original simulation. So let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. And right off the bat, we see about like what we would expect. We're getting 15 hits. The average time and the hit count without the tree is off by one. It's probably not counting itself. Most of these times look pretty reasonable. They're not very long, but there's an interesting outlier here. This average time with the neighbor tree, which is our new optimization, says zero. The hit count is 15. It matches the others, so we know we're getting the data back, but the time is zero. Is that right? Well, I checked it, and it is right. What if we add an extra zero here? Surely the time will increase, right? Well, no, actually, it doesn't. We can see that the time is increasing for these other methods. They're still reasonable. They're still perfect enough to work within a, uh, a real-time simulation, assuming that you're only checking once rather than performing the whole search like we are. But it gets even better if we bump this up one more. This is going to take a little while, but the results are pretty intense. So here we are almost an eternity later, what it felt like to me. You watched it happen in the blink of an eye, of course. 
And we see that while the timings increased for the other methods, without the tree is quite a bit higher than the others, the average time with the neighbor tree is still zero. Is that right? Could that really be right? Well, that's the benefit of not having to discard options. We don't have to do the check, is this point within my search radius, because we already know that all of the neighbors are already within that search radius. We're not getting extraneous data points that we need to discard, we need to check against. We can just loop through them, and we're seeing that the hit count is still the same, but that time of zero is the big kicker here. And we could even do things like up that. I'm going to drop this back down because that took quite a while. This will probably take a little while too with the search radius. But we can change the radius and we'll see that even though it's a little more dense maybe, we'll get more hits back, that time is still going to be zero because we're not doing any discarding. We already know where the points are that we need to check. So there we have it. We have 1,200 hits. The time is still zero. Nothing. It takes almost no time at all to search for nearby neighbors with this method. So we can see that the simple optimization makes a huge difference in this scenario. And it also still gives us the flexibility to use the quad tree if we wanted to, if necessary. For instance, I can still click in this simulation and extinguish the trees, and this still uses the quad tree to search for these, the trees within the click radius. But if I keep going, if I keep igniting, it still works. We're still working exactly the same, which is awesome. This also opens the door for some cool things we could do later, like using graph theory operations for quickly finding islands if we wanted to, or performing other directed graph operations if we need to use those tools in that toolkit of graph theory. We could easily do so because now we basically have a directed graph of nodes within our scenario, and there's lots of stuff that we could do there. So this has been a really awesome update to this project. And I've been thinking about this for a while, and I'm really happy at how simple it was and how effective it is. So I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I'll catch you next time.